2009 Chevy Express 2500 with the 4.8 V8 and today we're going to be replacing the alternator. Let's get to it. Alright, with our alternator located conveniently right on top of the engine right back here, it's a pretty straightforward job. It shouldn't take too long. First step, we're going to go ahead and remove our intake box. The intake box is held in at the front with two 10 millimeter bolts, a connector for your mass airflow sensor, and a little, uh, ah, what's the words, a uh, hose clamp, there we go, that you can remove with either a flathead screwdriver or I believe a 10 millimeter, but that might be an eight millimeter, but that's about it to remove the box, let's get to it. The hose clamp is an eight millimeter, but the angle is pretty bad, so I'm not gonna be able to do it. I'm gonna have to use a flathead screwdriver. Over to your connector, it has a safety tab on it. You're just gonna need to get underneath of that with a flathead screwdriver and gently pry that up and fly it across the room. Just kidding. But make sure you don't lose it. So you can just pop it back in. Go ahead and squeeze the connector clip down here at the bottom and pull out. And then you can just tuck this out of the way somewhere. That looks good to me. And I'm actually just going to go ahead and put this clip back in right there. So it's not locked in, but when you reconnect it, you just press this gray piece down and it'll lock it in. I'm gonna grab that screwdriver and we can go ahead and start removing our hose clamp. Now, for this next step, you do not need to remove the upper fan shroud assembly for the video's sake, because I'm trying to make a nice video and show you guys all the steps and the processes, I will be removing this. Again, you do not need to remove this. It's a little bit cramped in there, but you shouldn't really have any issue with doing this job for the alternator or doing this job for the drive belt or whatever have you. This is strictly for educational purposes. First thing I want to do, go ahead and remove our overflow tank. And rotate that out of the way. Next, on each side, there are three 10 millimeter bolts. Normally this piece for the upper radiator hose, you can see it has this protrusion right here. This would actually be stuck inside of that little hole, but this one does not have that. So, and last but not least, I'm gonna remove 
remove. There's two 10 millimeter bolts right here. And it looks like I'm gonna have to remove my intake tubing as well. Which is just a, another flathead screwdriver, but it needs to be a stubby. Got my little stubby screwdriver, flathead. Unnecessary. And we'll go ahead and put a temporary zip tie around our upper radiator hose. All right. So again, for educational purposes only, we have removed the upper radiator shroud. You do not need to do this. I just did this so that I would have a much better view for the camera and for the audience of whoever's watching. Now. Located right here is your tensioner, your drive belt, obviously, your idler pulley, alternator, your power steering pump, your water pump is located directly behind your fan, and below that will be your crank, and right over here on this side is your AC compressor. So in order to relieve the tension off of the tensioner, we're gonna need to grab ourselves a 15 millimeter ratchet. With your fan shroud still on, you can use a, a gear wrench ratchet like this, just slip in there pretty well or they have specialized tools. For me, I would probably just use a ratchet. And if I needed the extra torque, I would perform a double ratchet and use that to get it done. But we can go ahead, rotate in a tightening or clockwise rotation. And we just reach over here on top of the alternator and pull this belt off. And actually, even easier than the alternator, we're gonna put that in. The idler pulley is a smooth pulley. You can just slide that right off of that. Oh, I wish I had thought of that first before saying the alternator. Let go. But I did not. Oh well. And go ahead and undo. everything off of there and remove your old drive belt. And for anybody that needs to see it, here is our drive belt diagram. Your main crank around the water pump, around the power steering pump, over the alternator, around the tensioner, and over the tensioner. Your AC compressor has its own belt system and that loops behind your main belt. So we won't be replacing that. This video is just for the main belt or the alternator. So, you know, do with this video what you will. And uh, if you need to freeze this picture, just go ahead and pause the video. And our next step is going to be to remove the negative battery terminal. The battery is located on the passenger front fender. You can go ahead with a wrench. Break that nut loose and unscrew the bolt head. And just like that, yeah, it could disconnect it. And we're just going to tuck this thing out of the way somewhere because we do not want it to accidentally reconnect and shock us while we're disconnecting that alternator. And next, removing the alternator, go ahead and grab your 15 millimeter. I'll be using my 3 8 impact. 
first bolt and the second bolt, it looks like I might need just a small three inch extension to go between the fan because it's the first one I found. and grab my pry bar inch down here Good. yeah okay let's just stuck in there there we go and with that removed we can go ahead and rotate this thing disconnect our electrical connector by lifting up on the little prong pin which I'm now realizing you can't see on camera because my lighting is terrible. I move my light bar down here. So the connector on top of the alternator, which is right here. Just go ahead and pull this little ear up and get that out of the way. Go ahead and remove the power lead cover. It's this little rubber black cap looking doodad that keeps the uh, positive lead from grounding out and that looks to be it is a 10 millimeter let's see if I can get lucky and get this cool one here Disconnect that power lead, and there's our alternator. Ta-da! By the way, for this video, we're going to be using the CarQuest 11364 Alpha alternator. that bolt down tight, slide that protective cover back over it, try to anyway. Connect that connector. Go ahead and start sliding this alternator back into place. And grabbing a hefty hammer, giving it some light taps. out of the way so a better camera shot I thought that zip tie was gonna be a helpful idea but I guess it turned out to be more annoying
hose. start down here at the main crank because it is the most difficult one to get to because this big ass fans in the way. I'm going to come up here and we're going to bring all of our access. We're going to go ahead and we're going to put the drive belt into the grooves of the main crank and then we're going to pull all of our slack up over here to the left. And make sure you get all the slack up. Because that thing will come off real quick like. I'm going to wrap the belt around the tensioner and the water pump in the same go. Come down here to the power steering pump. here to the alternator and with everything lined up in all the correct grooves so make sure you double check that everything is nice and straight the water pumps good the main crank is wrapped around tightly we have our 15 millimeter and put our tensioner up and then we're going to come down here and put our slack around that idler pulley Like so. We can go ahead and put our battery terminal back on. And as previously stated, I removed my upper radiator shroud to give you guys a better shot with the camera. Uh, that was for educational purposes only. You did not need to remove this for this job. So with that being said, the only thing you should have to do from this point is reinstall your intake box and you should be golden. But other than that, if this video helped you out, consider watching this one right here. I made that one just for you. But other than that, if this video helped you out, leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you all next time.